Better than Lego. Better than Lego. <laughs> Matthew Jones is in position for a long range shot. He's with it now, Matthew Jones. Here goes the kick from Jones. Good evening and welcome to the Jones Family Podcast. Come on, Matt. Mm. Waiting for the king. Okay, yeah. Trish, mm-hmm. let him cook. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'd love to. Okay, Kate, you ready to take control here? That's funny. I thought that's what I was doing. Hey, Jack. Little porchetta. Take your haircut. Oh, Don't worry, I'll get him. Uh, <laughs> you what? Luke suits you. <laughs> what do you mean? I said I'll get him. Don't I worry. I can't even. <laughs> Council. He made a joke. Who, butch- who butchered Jack's hair? No. Oh, it says you. It suits. Yours mine is hideous. Mine is good. Jack's, yours is lovely. Look at the mullet. Yeah, look at yeah, the sides are shaved. Yeah, I got it today. Cool. Mm. Mm. Oh, gee, your mullet shaved, shaven as well, Cobber. Yeah. <laughs> oh, big man. Big yeah. man's sort of got like a mohawk going on. Yeah. Right? It's coming back, some of the hair. You, you need to stop telling him to thin it out, Cobber. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to leave this in. Yeah. Right? This is just a little insight to what happens oh. in this family, people. Shenanigans. Oh, the shenanigans. <laughs> uh, Hooper's in trouble. Uh, how are we all, by the way? I don't need to say hey, welcome to the Family Podcast. You're in the midst of it. Yeah. I'm itchy. I don't know what is wrong with me. I'm itchy and I've been itchy for about two to three weeks. Mm. Constantly on antihistamines. Mitts. I'm about to um, calamine myself tonight. It's driving Sorry? me nuts. Calamine. Calamine mm. yourself. Well, that brings us to the first question. If you were a hygiene oh. product, which would you be and why? Jack, can you lead us off? Um, yes. Yes, <laughs> I can. Right. <laughs> Sounds like uh, someone hasn't thought about it too much. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'll be Clorazole. I think that's what it's called. Uh, it's the cream. I had it in front of me as an example. But I forgot to get it out of my room, so I'll just go Clorazole. Mm. And it's the cream you use for ringworms. Oh. Yeah, yeah antifungus. Yeah. And I, could, could use that. A bit of fungi because it gets around in the, on the wrestle mats and all that sort of stuff in football. Right. Uh, and the rugby, league, the rugby league has like an ecosystem of ringworms that come together and mutate and work together. It's crazy. It is. So they haven't a- built a resistance to your product? No, no, they haven't. No, no. There, there is a culture of ringworm in yeah. rugby league. There is. And where I'm playing Patient Zero this week, Tino. Hey. Tino, Patient Zero. It's yeah. King of the Ring, as they used to say. <laughs> King of the Ring. That was at the storm. Yeah. Well, I'm, Hope, I'm, Hopefully he's gotten on top of that. I don't think he he would have lost it. He was covered in Susan, Susan Boyles and, oh, no. uh, and he, ringies everywhere. Was he really? And it would have just gotten worse up there, the tropical climate he, on I the Gold Coast. I felt so bad for his family because he would just be covered in all these like anti-fungus creams and just stuff all the time. Yeah. The heat, humidity, and schoolies wouldn't help either. Yeah, it was all. <laughs> yeah, oh, King Tooley. Which, which was your favourite year of schoolies? Schoolies you go up mm, every year. I reckon. 20, Shouldn't joke about that. I reckon twenty fourteen was the best year. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was. It, it was fantastic. Well, they tw- well, they twenty sixteen was pretty good. One year, myself and myself, Gordy, and Laurie Daly went out. We had to do a um, a promotion up there. So we went up the Gold Coast and we went. Oh, we we're sitting around the pool having a beer. I said, "What do you reckon, boys? If we go down the, we'll go down the beach and have a swim." So we go down. It's late afternoon. As we walk along the beach, this chant starts up. People are chanting at us, going "Toolies, Toolies." <laughs> I didn't realise it was schoolies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laurie, <laughs> Laurie, and <laughs> Laurie and the Raging Bull. Well, I had, uh, I had floss, dental floss. <gasps> How dare you! Did you have that? How well? dare you? You know how much I love my okay. dental floss. You both could use some. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I do use mine. Yeah, I use mine. Too. Actually, I noticed you did, and I noticed that you actually put it down the toilet. You cannot put the dental floss down the toilet because I buy the good stuff. Okay. That's not disintegrating. They are. Okay. You need Shout to put to it in the bin. There. Don't put your dental floss yeah. down the toilet. I used, yeah. to, I used to when. You know, I used to flush the jimmies down the toilet, but they used to come floating back up, unfortunately, didn't they, Trish? What? Uh, I, I, sorry, that... I, I just had a minute. Anyway. Unused uh, you're jimmies. An idiot. You're just okay. a... So are you going floss as okay. well, Trish? Yeah, well, why are you floss, Cooper? I want to know your reason. Let's uh, see who's better, who does it better. I think it's uh, apparently it's more important than brushing. Yeah, apparently I told you that. More important. Well, you think Google told me Urban as well. Myth. Uh, it's also a really good dance move, the floss. Oh. Has to come in. My favorite, you know, dun, dad always dun, loves that, dun. brings that out, and that's why. Oh, uh, sorry, okay. I just had a mental, uh, a mental moment where I was thinking when when the Jimmies came back out of the toilet, uh, that's how Cooper was born. 
Yeah, it was. <laughs> Yelling up, take me to your leader. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go down. I'll just lay him on Coop's bed. Go on back with your leaner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are you okay, Ooh, Cooper? Sounds Cooper's, like it's one nil. Cooper's not okay. I just don't really understand it. Doesn't really make sense. Doesn't need oh, to make right. sense. That's all right. Your infantile mind. Mm. Maybe we'll catch up a little bit later. Okay. Well, I'm dental floss because I'm good at getting into tight spaces and. Uh, <laughs> Oh, hey, you stole my line. Ah, uh, yeah, goodness. <laughs> what? I wanted to be dental floss. I want to be in tight spaces. In tight spaces and preventing problems and troubles. Oh, right. Oh. Okay. Okay. I'm Just a talking, preventer. Talking about before pregnancy. <laughs> what? <laughs> Damn up. you, Jack. <laughs> oh my God! Just shut up, you. Well, I was going to go dental floss, but unfortunately, you've both stolen it. So well, I'll you just... never use it, so I don't know why you would. Okay, well, I'm going to pick something that I use. Well, I use it on other people. I'm going Vagisol. <laughs> uh... <laughs> <laughs> Letting people know when there's a little bit too much cheese on the taco. Um... <laughs> Let's move now, on. Do we even sell that in Australia? Um, I, I think we would. That was me, myself, and Irene, right? right. Mm. I think that is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Did everyone seem to just ignore entirely my country music challenge from last week? Did anyone get any fa- feedback? In fact, Tr- can, I, can Trish, you guys give me some? I didn't even listen. Uh. Yeah, I noticed you clocked out. You actually zoomed out. You zoomed out of the Zoom. Wait, you can't do that. I'm trying to. I'm, I'm actually trying to erase it from my mind. <laughs> You're an <laughs> asshole. You're not. Mate. <laughs> You're Paul, an asshole. Well, Paul, are we Paul still, Dave. Are we still doing the uh, – sorry. Who's Dave? doing it next say, anyway? Paul Dave uh, has actually left the podcast studio today because of – No, he's not well. Yeah, he's yeah, not well. well that's because of your singing. <laughs> he went away, Dave, and he actually – he got two screwdrivers when he left and just jammed them into his ears <laughs> and burst his own eardrums. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. As one of the Kardashians Ooh. say, I can't unhear that. <laughs> Would you, well, what about feedback on my lyrics? Yeah, okay. Some, are you just assholes? I just, yeah. You're just assholes. Hey, just which Kardashian like. said that, Cobart? I'd be interested to see. Um, Robert Kardashian. <laughs> the old man. Is there a Robert? No, Robert is the brother of Rob. Oh, Robert. He's out of it now. I don't think he, I nah. think he ducked out. Good move. Ducked out. Yeah. Good move, well, Bob. Mm. Well, uh, I've actually had an interesting week. Guys, uh, I got a funny story for you. So yeah. you should never start by mm. saying I've got a funny story. Present it as a story. <laughs> leave the expectations low. Mm. Thanks. Start uh, again. And there might be. <laughs> start again. I've got a story for you guys. Is it a funny one? It's horrible. It's not funny at all. Um, so good. after our game, uh, we played against the Tigers on the weekend. Uh, Gav Sweet Tigers, who put up a who uh, put up a good fight. They did. Uh, they I thought they played a good, fight. a good game. I hang on, hang on, hang on. Don't act like you played. You mm. were 18th man. Yeah, uh, you're all, on the sideline. Guys, it's a full squad effort. Every win is a full squad effort mm. for the listeners out there. The work you do during the week, the 18th man's energy in the warm up, it all mm. contributes to the win. I will uh, be taking that. Mm. Anyway, thanks for interrupting. After the game, uh, I had to. We had to go to the ER. Uh, Ken wasn't well. We had to take her to the ER. So. Um, it was about midnight. I thought, okay, I'm ready to take her to the emergency room. I'm just going to go upstairs and tell mum and dad what's happened. Mm. So I walk upstairs. Mum and dad were asleep. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've walked Rustling. up there not not really knowing if I was uh, clothed or not. Anyway, I've gone up there and I've put my hand on mum and said, mum, mum, dad, mum starts screaming. She goes, oh. Dad wakes up screaming. Oh, oh, he rolls off, hits the deck on the bed, and then Mum just going, "Oh, oh, you're naked. Why are you naked?" <laughs> yeah, well, I've got a high bed, so when I w- opened my eyes and you had your torch on your phone there as light, all I saw was your doodle. Yeah, and Mate. this, and she got so scared. Mum thought it was an anaconda in there. <laughs> And I was sitting there going, I've got to go, I've got to go to the hospital. I've got to <laughs> just drive uh, Canada to the hospital. And dad was started freaking out as well. I think dad, dad doesn't even really remember. I, th- I think he was a bit wigging out, but he was going, oh, mate, I'll drive you up. I'll drive you up. <laughs> Meanwhile, dad's completely naked too. I uh, said, no, Big M, you sit there. You lay that, uh, that little land eater down there and I'll, I'll take it myself. <laughs> but uh, yeah, oh, it how, was. How'd you go up there at the hospital when you arrived oh, at the. Uh... I'll tell you right now. The, it's not a great experience as it going to the emergency room. Yep. We were there, got there at midnight, and we ended up getting home at 11.30 the next day. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, not much sleep going on. We didn't see a doctor until 5 a.m. sitting in there in the waiting room. All was well, so yes. uh, credit to that. Thanks for, thanks for them for looking after us. But enough about me and Jack's week. Yeah. What have, you two just, have had a great week. Just, just before you move away, talking about emergency wards and the game against the Tigers on the weekend, I tip my lid to Charlie Staines. Charlie Staines played the whole game with a perforated bowel. It's coming what? Out. Yes. Which How is did he odd perforate his nickname, but that his surname Stains. I imagine there's a joke in there somewhere, like <laughs> shit stains and that. But he played, he played the. He, he How put, do you perforate your bowel? Uh, they haven't given us the ins and outs. I'd say he got hit in a tackle and perforated his bowel. Oh, you think a, a, a tackle? Was, was, was that a play on? Was that a play on words, Kyle? The ins and outs. The, oh. Well, very good. Job. I, I, I don't know. I'm perforated fine. bowel. I, I just I to think, me, it seems like a very internal. Yeah, I'd say he'd been hit hard in the tackle. Really? And it happens. Perforated. In. Really? You wouldn't know. Where's your MD after your name, if, mate? Uh, if that happened to you, Cobber, would you want the club to make that public? Yes, definitely, because you'd be getting known as a hard man. Yeah. Hard yeah. man Matthew <laughs> Johns plays game with perforated bow. Yeah. But uh, well done to Charlie Staines. He played it. Pl- I think I'm, he played I'm going to well. Google some of the causes. I, I'm kind of thinking Trish, that maybe Trish, really hot food might give you a perforated bowel. It does. I knew a man from Cessnock who went to one of those pizza places that had one of the promotions oh. on the wall that said, if you can eat our volcanic pizza, um, you get everyone eats for nothing. So he ordered the volcanic family-sized pizza, ate it all, and later that night he, his bowel like perforated, exploded. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have the volcanic pizza and barrel. I I find that very hard to believe. No, I, it's, it's it's true. Another another friends of ours once trauma. Oh, thanks, trauma Scoot. can do it. Yeah, inflammation. Well, uh, Instrumentation. We've moved on, Trish. We've moved on. Okay. Charlie, Obstruction. Charlie's getting all the right help. Mm. It's okay. Okay. He, although he's a listener of this podcast. <laughs> oh, I hope uh, you're better. Yeah, uh, but. Okay. Um, the other one, friends of ours, they moved to Melbourne in the early 90s and they were drunk and called and uh, ordered a vindaloo and the Indian guy said, how hot do you want it? And my mate, been a bit of smart, he had a few beers and went, he goes, mate, as hot as you can make it. They took him to hospital with like first degree burns all Is over that his banger? lips. Yeah, banger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's well, just- hit, hit us. That's, that's very interesting. Hit, now hit us with your week. Um, our week, Trisha, we went to, on Tuesday, we went to the Anzac, Anzac Day test. game, Roosters yeah, it was versus fun. Dragon. Goes at like Anzac Day, honestly, you know, um, such an important day with the, with the march and all the diggers. Very important not to compare sport to battle. You know, some people make, you know, some people like to do that. It's, it's, it's a fine line when you talk about, you know, sport and war, you know, and they shouldn't be sp- spoken about in the same breath. But when it comes... To Anzac Day, the AFL and the NRL do it very well, do it very mm. respectfully. And Trish, mm. it was incredible day. At incredible Allianz crowd, Stadium. and we were right up near the nosebleeds, and it's still a great view there. I love, I love the view. It's actually really good. The view over the top, mm. you see everything happening. It was good. What were you doing up there? Oh, we just we, we got just got our tickets and got in there, and yeah. uh, of course I'm not drinking. Uh, Trish and Rosemary were there sitting together, two Italians, and I was going down to the toilet. And they're yelling out, "Well, you're down there. Get us a couple of beers." We didn't have beers. So, yeah, or you have, sorry, Canadian Bourbon. Canadian clubs. As I'm walking up the stairs, chunk chunk chunk, people are going, "Oh, look at him! He's back on the drink, eh? You're broken your 75 hard. Wait till I tell Fletch." I said, "No, no, I'm buying it for my wife." And they go, "Ha ha ha!" <laughs> well, you pussy whipped. I'm like, can't yeah, win. good on you. But you can't win. You literally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I met lots of people there. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. We had this y- lovely young bloke sitting next to us, um, Ellie. What the most charming 16-year-old rooster supporter I've ever met. Okay. He was just so sorry, the most charming sixteen-year-old rooster supporter you've ever met. Yes. Right. Uh, let's talk about all the charming sixteen-year-old rooster supporters you do run into in me. And do you know the me. other? And even walking in through the crowd, um, I don't know if you noticed, Matt, but I made eye contact with a guy wearing a an old retro Henny Penny Knights jersey. I didn't notice yeah, that. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay. You see a few of them around, Trish. I like them. Yeah, mm. they're not like unicorns. You do sort of you spot them. No, but it looked like new. So, Trish, Not like yours with the falling off thing. What else is going on your week? And you know what, Matt? I want to speak to you about you've got five days left. When this comes out, you've got five days left of your 75 hard. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? How are you going? Because there's been some 
not touch and go moments. You weren't no. going to give up, but it's been, you've been struggling like mentally, I think. I think for people that want to do a challenge, go 50 hard. Because <laughs> I think at 50, I think at 50 you sort of peak. I think at 50 you feel great. You feel good mentally. Um, You're feeling a bit tired, aren't you? I'm real. I am. I'm fatigued. Do you think mm. that's part of it, though? The, the mental. What well, I suppose that's now? why it's called seventy-five hard. Yeah, I think I'm going to relay with seventy-five awful <laughs> because the last two weeks have been rather yeah. awful. But mate, you're you're almost there, brother. Yeah, I, I, I'm basically there. Um, I've got a sense of anticipation. It ends next Wednesday, uh, and of course the next is that day, your last day? Yep, and then the following uh, my last day, sorry, is the Tuesday, Tuesday yeah. the Wednesday. I'm going to hold fire because we go up to Magic Ground on Thursday. Yeah. Oh. Magic ground, you will be tragic ground. Oh, uh -oh. Be you better behave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll be with you, Cobber. Yes. I'll be hanging out with you. Jack's coming up, the magic Good, ground. Good, you can babysit him. Yep. yep. And um, uh, old Coop Dog, we'll, we'll see the if buy. Coop's playing. We've got the buy, so I'll be sitting there. I'll have a couple of beers with you, Cobber. How about that? All right, oh. mate. I look forward to it. The nights. Heavenly. How can you leave the nights out of magic ground? Oh. What the hell is really going on? It's actually really quite unfair. Knights have a good following in Knights have got a good following in Brisbane as I well. I think they based it off crowd attendance of the last magic. I think they had the least interaction. Yes, but I think it's probably when um, your game's placed and who you're playing against as well. So I don't think that could Hundred. actually. Knights had the I tough. Don't think that Knights had the tough time slot. Yeah, uh -huh. sure they did. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, when did they play right, last year? Right, you know? Trish. If the Knights are in, who do we kick out? Right up. We get, oh, well, we, that's it. Someone would have to miss out. Yes, it is. Who's going to miss yeah. it? You know what? Damn the Dolphins. Although they're a, although they're a Brisbane-based side, they're the last team in. They're the first one to go. Mm. There, I've said it. Do Controversial. You know what? Do you know what I'd do? I'd let the Warriors have the week off and let them be home, not Back travel. In, well, hang on a given, second. Given Hold on. everything that's happened and all the sacrifices they made during COVID, let them have that time home. You know, what, you know what I'd do? Oh, you go, you go, Cobber. No, you go. no, I'm, I'm, I'm in your hands. Go. I'd go, I'd go the Warriors with you, Trish. Mm. But I'd say next year, Magic Rounds on you. We go to I, New Zealand. I Ooh, love that. Oh, I love that too. Yeah. See, I, I thought, I thought That's not Melbourne, bad Amy idea. Park, and Melbourne do Anzac Day incredibly well. I actually thought this year would have been nice for New Zealand to have the yeah, Anzac have Day. Have had place. it there, yeah. Again, once. With their been through, but everything. traditionally they don't move. Like the the Rooster St George game is always. It's at always it Allianz is, it is tradition. Yeah. It is true. I'll say this about the Warriors, Trish. They have to be in Magic Ground. That like, I years ago talking to Broncos officials, their biggest home game of the year was always Broncos Warriors. And when but you there's use, a lot of New Zealanders up in huge up in Queensland. And when you go to the Broncos merchandise store back then. Mate, honestly, I reckon about a third of the store was Warriors merchandise. Really? Yeah. Wow. They've got a really huge following. Huge. Wow. Well, <laughs> huge. Uh, uh, Cooper's nasty review. Go, Cooper. Yeah, well, uh, I can't take all the credit for this one, actually. Gav Gav flicked me this uh, over the weekend, and it uh, got me thinking, what's what's something different we can do? Because we can't just keep doing mean messages. We've got to innovate. We've got to keep moving forward, mm. gotcha. as you say, Dad. Uh, he found a spider. Uh, it's called the Fenetria, uh Nigriventa, its bite can cause severe symptoms, including pain, increased uh, pulse, blood pressure, respiratory rate, penile erection that lasts for several hours, and in several documented cases, death, uh, which I thought was really interesting. And then it got me thinking, uh, well, what else, what else gives people erections? Mm. So uh, I googled um, the weirdest causes for erections, mm. and I found some really good answers on... Yeah. Uh, so what was the name of that spider? I, I, oh, that, you know, Trish is not important. Oh, Jesus oh, Christ. So this was from Jonah, who's 19. One time I was eating a donut and it was so delicious it gave me an erection. So thanks, Jonah. This is via... Uh, Talk about Dunkin' Donuts. This is via Cosmopolitan magazine as well. So uh, these are factual. I love Cosmo. Uh, Alex, 25. Uh, food arriving at my table in a restaurant. I can understand that one if you're hungry. Uh, you know what I mean? Really good food. Sort yeah. of come. Maybe, maybe he was yeah. enjoying the... Wonderful buffet at Hooters. Oh, oh. potentially. Yeah. Yeah. Good this thinking. one from Ray, who's 27. I can relate to this one a lot, and I think Jack will be able to. Lois from Family Guy. Um, <laughs> I think what? as well. You're a sick man. What? Really? <laughs> Sorry, Coop. That's not cool. 
I mean, look, I used to read the Jughead magazines, and there was one of the ones in there. But that did anyone else get a little stiffy? The uh, uh, from like TV shows, animated TV shows back in the day, or movies. Did you ever have a character that maybe might have tickled your fancy? Um, uh, Wilma Flintstone sort of did it for you a little bit. <laughs> uh, Bam Bam's mum. I'm trying to think. Barney's Betty. Like, Betty. Betty was sort of, <laughs> Betty was pretty hot. Um, yeah, unfortunately, Fred and Barney weren't so much. Uh, Grand Theft Auto, I don't know if many people play it, but uh, me and Jack used to play it a fair bit. This guy, Shane, who's 21, said, watching the strippers in Grand Theft Auto give my character a lap dance, which <laughs> I know so many of my friends who have said the exact same thing. Oh, my what? God. Yeah. So it's a fantasy lap dance if, of your character. Grand Theft Auto, you can sort of run around and, like, you know, just do whatever you want. It's basically you just put your characters in a city, you can do whatever you want, and the cops come. If you start killing people, the cops come after you. But there's a strip club in there, and you can go into the strip club. And obviously, little insane Shane has gone in and uh, has been obviously... Getting a lap dance. Copped, you know, copped a lappy. Oh, my God. Yep. Hogan, who was 24, uh, <laughs> I was the first time I went to watch Avatar and the two blue people were banging. <laughs> 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 Which I can understand Is as that well. Avatar one or two? Uh, Dad, you can definitely relate to this. Jesse at 24 said, thinking back on my personal sporting accomplishments. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I wish my old, uh, put my highlights on and just oh sit there and me and Trish just play with each other. Uh, <laughs> don't bring me into it. Oh, sorry. No, we don't You're do weirdo. that. Of course, wink, wink. No, she don't. And uh, the last one. Did you say wank, wank? Wink, wink. wink, oh. wink. Get it off your mind, babe. <laughs> Weisman, who was 22, uh, he said, my English teacher yelling at me, uh, oh. which I get too, which I can really? understand. Well, I think when you're in school, just about everything gives you an erection. Can I just ask you this? Jesus. Have you got any mates that have this sort of, <laughs> any sort of kinky stuff going on? Like to the, like, cause I believe there's a thing at the, at the moment, animated porn is a big thing. Is that true? Anime. Uh, um, I think anime has been around for a fair while. Jack knows a fair bit of yeah, it. Look, Jack's <laughs> smiling away. Hey, hang on a second. Byron, hang what's on a your second. Don't direct at me. I think direct back in the room with you. What? Are you talking to Dad? <laughs> what, are you, what is going on? Who are you pointing old at? Pur old purple shirt there. Just be very careful, Coop. Uh, That's just blue. Oh no no no! I never I never got into um, animated porn no, no as a kid or anything. No. Thank God. No, no. Can we move on? Do you remember talking <laughs> about like, it? Oh. Let's uh, take a real quick break, and we'll come back with Jack's ten to one music. Welcome back, Jack. Let's pick up the ball and run with it. Uh, ten to one, <laughs> Jack's ten to one. What are you doing, mate? <laughs> I've gone with top ten overplayed songs. Oh, yeah. Oh, love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody Radio made... time, air time. Okay, Jack, Things before, that you just get be sick of. Before you start, can we all have a guess? One guess, the one the song that might be on the list. I'm going to go Jump. Yeah. By Van Halen. Yeah. Van Halen. Yeah. Is that on the list, Jack? It's not. But oh. I, I, I think it's hard to be missed out. I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay. I will say, from an Australian point of view, which is one of the greatest songs ever, but still, it's, mate, just Triple M have always say ma it. Almost massacred it. <laughs> Kaysan. Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, I can oh. hear that. I, I can't say I hear that on the radio. Yeah, yeah I don't hear Case Hunter. Yeah, not on at the pubs. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to say, what's what's that? Right? I'm just going to go out there and I'm going to say, uh, "Better" by the Screaming Jets. So, what? Sorry, no. I uh, I had one in my head and I completely forgot it. Doesn't I'm matter, gonna... Jack. I tell, I tell you what, they're overplayed. No, oh, depends now. What, at the Depe moment, did you say Depeche Mode? No, no sorry. like flowers. Marley Cyrus's flowers. That's oh, on everything, yeah. ever the all yeah. the time. Sorry, Jack. But not long term. Shoot, my man. Sorry. Number ten, <laughs> uh, Wonderwall Oasis. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Never liked that song. It's, it's been flogged to death. Uh, number nine, I went with Sweet Home Alabama, mm. Skin, uh, Leonard Skinner. Yeah. Uh, okay. Number eight, Hotel California by the Eagles. Yeah, it's one of those songs I love. I constantly... I do love it. Yeah. It's got a nice fit. Oh, I love it, but it's, it's, it's been whipped into gear. It's like the go-to song for every cover band. Okay, mm. true. Um, Although I don't really listen to radio much. I was about to say, I haven't heard any of these songs. Like it's not it's just right. It's not just radio. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Uh, Wagon Wheel. <gasps> love yeah. it. It is overplayed, but it's a good song. Love it. Uh, number six, with Eminem's Lose Yourself. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll get that one. Yeah, yeah. definitely. I was disappointed he did that at the Super Bowl. I thought, <laughs> sorry, is it Super Bowl? <laughs> okay. no, yeah. I'd be yeah. disappointed, disappointed if he hadn't. I thought he should have done without me or another. I thought he, should, he could have done both. Yeah. Well, mm. I, he only did one. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, Fire, Jack. Number five, I went Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Yeah. Oh, How does that go? That's the, uh, remember Nathan Cleary's song when he was dancing <laughs> to the TikTok? Oh, is that uh, yeah, that song? Yeah. Uh, number four, I've gone with uh, Hey Ya by Outkast. Oh, yeah, yeah. I that, don't think it is. That got smashed. I don't think it is. I love that song. Hey, yeah, I do too. Yeah. I never liked that song. Hey, Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Cobb. Uh, I've gone with uh, number three, Seven Nation Army by the White Stripes. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Mm. Yeah, mm. true. You, hear, you see it a lot on compilations. Yeah, yeah, yeah on yep. YouTube. Mm. Uh, number three, I went Losing My Religion by R.E.M. Yeah. I love I that disagree. Song. I disagree. You disagree? I disagree. I love it. That's way G- too low. A, well, I, I want to hear back and forth because they're my opinions. Okay. And they can be very wrong. So please, yeah. enlighten. Yeah. I love I love R.E.M. as a band. It's not one of my favourite songs, Losing My Religion. Mm. It's, it's their most, I one think, of their most famous. I think but. I would have definitely had Wonderwall lower on that. Like R.E.M. should have been, if it's on that list, and I don't think it should be, it should have been number 10. All right. Fair Wonderwall. enough. That's fair enough. Mm. Do you want to, can so I share angry. a little secret with you people? Yeah. Oh. In, a dark, a t- in a dark, in a particularly dark moment in my life when I was younger, I would have been eh, twenty maybe. Um, I slept a whole night. I was very into replaying Uh-oh. the same song again and again and again Here the entire go. night with that playing. Slept with it on. With my serial it. killer like, okay, I know uh, that's like weird. Okay, crazy goth woman. <laughs> <laughs> crazy where's what your, woman? Where's your Where's your skateboard? Crazy goth woman. Mm. Emo. Uh, Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dark moment. Can I do number? Anyone want to guess number one? Oh. 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 Can you give us the artist? Uh, no, but I'll oh. tell you what, I'll give you a hint. The reason I chose this one uh, is because it became, it was one of the first sort of internet pranking sensations and it just got overplayed on people's computers throughout the 2000s. Oh. Oh, do you know what I reckon it should be? Oh, it should have been um, "I'll Be There for You," whever that band's name oh, is that, had, that that they used the theme song for Friends. That was overkill. Yeah. Okay. Let's back to Jacks again. So what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going with Jack. Never going to give you up, Rick Astley. Oh, oh I love, love it. Of course. Never gonna when you got yeah. Rick rolled. Yeah. Rick rolled. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Good list, Jack. I like that. I like the imagination to look outside the square. Well done. <laughs> Um, Thanks, man. Trisha. Yes. Did I hear an announcement the other day? White Lotus is going back for series three. Yeah, yeah, that's been announced, right. and they're going, and they've announced that it's in Thailand. But the newest part of that announcement was that one of the cast members from series oh, season one is coming back, and oh. I was really hoping it was the Aussie guy, the the oh, hotel the manager. Yes, I loved him. He didn't die at the end of that, did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he passed. How? Do you remember, do you remember the the asshole? Guy that was on the honeymoon oh, and stabbed he stabbed him. Or him. Oh, he, yeah. did too. he did a shit in his luggage. Oh, that was hilarious. And he hit him. Yeah. And yeah, you never see that on TV. That was funny, but it wasn't funny when he was Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, he's not coming back. You'll be pleased to know because, like, yeah. really, they killed him off. But it's the, you know, the hotel spa manager, the really lovely, sweet oh, lady that yep. Jennifer she Coolidge's. Had on the hook a little bit. Uh, yes. So she's Jennifer. Uh, Coolidge's character screwed her over because she was going to set her up in a business, la, 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 and then she, like, wafted off with the fairies. I've got it. So she's in it. And I was thinking, okay, what role would she play? Well, she might be the spa manager there in Thailand. But you know what I think? What? And you heard it here first. I think because Jennifer Coolidge's character was killed off in the last one, right? Yep. Okay. I think she leaves her Spoiler. billions to her. Leaves the business. Leaves the billions. Billions. Oh. So she might be going there as a guest. That's my prediction. Oh God, I Watch hope you're this right. Space. I hope so too. That that would be that mm. would be good. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. Interesting. Um, there's a mo- there's a movie at the moment. I don't know, Jack. You're pretty au fait as far as films and coming out and what. Au fait. Sorry, that's not a part of my vocab. Oh. Oh, no, it, I know. What does that right. mean? It means you're pretty much across things. Oh, thanks. Um, Bo is afraid. It's a new movie with Joaquin Phoenix. Um, Liam Alexander and Ben Hogarth went and saw it. Uh, and they they loved Liam Alexander, who's quirky Liam. Liam actually loved it. He said it was really good. He said, although he said about seven or eight people walked out of the cinema. Very much. They, an, they uh, said it's very art house, yeah. very polarizing film. Yeah. And violent. Was, it's very no. Nah, it didn't look it violent. Might. It just looked very unorthodox. Like it looks like it's hard to follow unless you sort of think in that. 
Think, oh, okay. Think, yeah, it looks very. It looked kind of hard to follow when we watched the trailer, didn't it? Do you want to hear a little bit about Joaquin Phoenix? That I found mm. out. Okay. Good. Okay. Right. Up. Where was? Have sure. a guess. Where? Where do you think Joaquin Phoenix was born? What country? Oh, Canada. And grew up. No, no, Puerto Rico. Really? He's Puerto Rican. Who is he? <laughs> he's Puerto Rican. Joaquin. Yeah, Joaquin. He is. He's Puerto Rican. Do you know what his real name is? His real name. Hang on. So all the brothers. Yeah. There's River. Yep. They're all Puerto, Puerto Rican. Puerto Ricans. Yeah, the father lives in Costa Rica now, but um, yeah, and they moved to America. Their mum. They all moved to America with their mum to try to make it in film. So they, that's why they mom- changed their last name to Phoenix. Rise from the Ashes. Oh, lovely. Because his real no, name. I think it actually is. I think it's it's been documented. Is yeah. it oh. really? Because his real name, because his real name is Joaquin Bottom. That's why that's Rise from the Ashes, Rise from the Bottom. Yeah. Phoenix. Well, lovely. His Thanks first cool. film. So is his mum actually Puerto Rican? No. no is dad Puerto Rican? Um, you, this is getting a little confusing. I, I sort of like to sort of touch on things. Yeah, you don't like the in-depth. So he, he lived there and was born there, but parents not necessarily Puerto Rican. He was born in Puerto Rico. He right. is, he's Puerto Rican. Please don't fact check, Dave. Yes. Paul. Yeah, please don't. Um, his Sorry. First, what year was he first, born? I oh, don't know. <laughs> his first film was Parenthood. He got put in that. For, um, Ron Howard put him in um, Parenthood. And it was interesting. Listen to an interview on Smartless with him. Remember that movie I'm Still Here where he oh. actually pretended that he was a rapper and that he quit hmm. acting and was going to be a rapper and everyone's like, is this serious or not? Hmm. Anyway, he for two years he had even his best friends believing, yeah, yeah, like he's quitting and, and he had people trying to do intervention on him. Meanwhile, him and Casey Affleck had this whole film. Don't, when they released the film, people still went, no, 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 he's trying to actually – Come back into acting now because he's because he's failed as a rapper. And people wouldn't touch him for a year. People are like, nah, we're not doing it, mate. You failed. It's a little odd. Yeah, you failed as a rapper, and we're not going to take you on. Now you're coming back to acting with your tail between the legs. And then he came went started a film called The Master, and things went from there. So right. I've done my five, top five Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix movies. Look at you, Agree man. or disagree? Go. It doesn't matter. Number five to die for. He plays the guy with Nicole Kidman, who's sort of oh. the weather woman, and mm. she gets him and she entices him as a younger guy to kill her husband and yeah. whatnot. That's good. Yep. Number four, Irrational Man. Okay. He plays a tormented uh, professor who has an affair with a student. Irrational Man. It's oh, like a, yes. It's a dark comedy. He's it, quite the drinker in that too, isn't he? It's very, very good. Number three, Walk the Line. Great movie. Brilliant. Number two, Gladiator. He plays. Nasty. He plays the the the, the emperor. Right? Emperor, yeah. So good. Mm. He's a great villain in that. Number one, Joker. Yeah. yeah. It's awful out there, Marie. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Sorry, I didn't know Tom Hanks was in uh, Joker. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, Forrest Gump. Mm, 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 mm. You get what you deserve. Yeah. You get what All you right. deserve, Maury. Jenny. Yeah. Okay, I've got a little bit of interesting stuff for you guys. <laughs> Do you know that the United Nations has um, said that India's population is projected to surpass China sometime this year? In fact, it might have already. Really? Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah. Because, so, of course, China had the one child uh uh, policy for a long while. Yes, um, but India's uh, population is expected to reach 1.429 billion wow. by the end of this year. Yeah, Cooper, yeah. pay attention, mate. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, well, they say it's that showing off, Coop. Yeah. yeah, there's countries in the world that all they had to do was put get their economy and their country in order, and it's just they expected it. I remember about 10, 15 years ago, they said the rise of the titans. It was China. India and Brazil. Yeah, well, Brazil's the, still once, yeah. plugging along there. Out there. Once they get their their government and economy mm. in order, that was going to surpass everyone. Mm. They still may. Might be a powerhouse. Okay, so so it's going to be India, China, US. How many? 340 million. Mm. Do you know what the population of Australia is? It uh, is 38 million. 18, 29 million. 18.7 no. million. No, you're all wrong. No. Um, Last census gave us 25.69 million. Mm. Uh, UN data estimates it at the moment to be just over 26 million. Because I remember when it was 15. When we, were, when we were young, it was 15. I can million. remember 16. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we, yeah. Um, and do you know the other really interesting fact when I was looking at this? Do you know that more than 80% of Australians live within the coastal zones? 80% yeah. of our population. Yeah. Yes. How far do they put the coastal yeah, zone I don't know. now? Like, for instance, the Hunter Valley. 
it's an hour in. Do they class that as a coastal Could. in the coastal zone? I don't know. Could it, yeah. yeah, that's an interesting fact. Where'd you get the facts from? Mm. Um, Google. Hey, and <laughs> hear that, Trish. Yeah, but from the United Nations. From the Encyclopedia okay. Britannica. Oh, they're, they're not around, mate. Um, okay, and my question to you people, which country has the lowest population in the world? Uh, the Does, Vatican. Is it the Vatican? Well, Vatican City. Ooh. The Vatican City. Mm. And I, it was a, like there a, was a bit of a discrepancy. A one more question? Around yeah. 500-ish. And number two, I think, is Liechtenstein. Oh, they had to, no. I don't think it was. There oh, were some like okay. Nauru. There were some unusual places. No. Okay, Monaco, Tuvala. Yeah. Are Monaco. we on? Are we on your? What do you make of this? Yeah, but I, I didn't like what I had. Okay. That was about the old bloke Good, blowing up on the plane. Now, well, I tell you what, we'll do Change on it. that note. We'll take a real quick break, and we'll come back with hot or not. Welcome back, and it's time for Hot or Not. Really simple one this week. Pretty a couple. A little bit later, we've got a predicament of the week. Uh, we're just watching Jack, he's who's sink, disappearing. He's sinking up yes. his lounge. He's in a funny mood tonight. He's he's in a really, really funny ha-ha yeah. mood. Good one, Jack. Uh, <laughs> it's only taken him three years. <laughs> it's good to see, mate. When you're up, the podcast's up. Uh, hot or Not, guys, 80s music. Because 80s music... Sort of disappeared in the 90s, Trish. It was uncool because it was too close. Mm -hmm. Then we had separation, then all of a sudden cool again. Is it cool or is it daggy? I love that's, it. That's, that's one of the great statements I've ever heard, Cobber. 80s music disappeared in the <laughs> 90s. <laughs> it disappeared yeah. up its own anus. It's special. <laughs> It's for no, 80s yeah. mu Aussie music. L let, let, me guess, let me guess what they called 80s music in the 90s. Right. Did they call it 90s music? They, you, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to leave that. If you're going to be if you're going to be in that sort of mood, um, okay, we're at this one. Mick Jagger, hot or not? Because I've got a bit of stuff for you that I listened to a podcast the other day with Lars Ulrich from um, Metallica. Had a story about Mick Jagger. I'm not a fan. Fan. I'm a Keith man. I'm a Keith man. Right. Well, I'm a I, woman. Too. Ronnie I think Wood. He's kind of, I, I kind of think they're not as cool anymore. Mm. But, yeah. I well, think the yeah, band's cool. I think goes. Mick. Mm. Jack? Yeah, com comes and goes. Comes and goes. I think well, not at the moment. Metallica had a story. When they toured, Metallica were in their 40s. So it was probably, you know, talking about 15, 20 years ago, they went on tour with the Rolling Stones. And Lars and that would say, oh, they couldn't wait. They're like, yeah, we'll be partying with them and everything like that. They said, no, it wasn't. They said, Keith was good, but literally as they'd be preparing and doing sound checks, their mix PR person would come out and say, okay, just letting you know that Mr. Jagger will be coming out here and walking through to go to his gym area in about five minutes. Please do not make eye contact with him. Oh, so I hate the non-eye contact and I'm going, people. I'm thinking, it's a Metallica. Yeah. Like it's not as it's not as if it's like you know yeah, like some some, some band. Do you know yeah, I, I band out of Cessna. get that vibe from him though that he holds himself in a higher yeah him and yeah I think him and Keith have a problematic relationship. Okay, last one, hot or not, using the word journey. Oh, I hate journey. Yeah, yeah, I don't like uh, when I listen to like people getting their debut or like talking about like different jerseys and stuff, and they start talking about their journey. They say it's been mm. a hell of a journey or something like yeah. that. Yeah, on like my use a different word. On my mm. journey, where this my path? On my path to greatness. <laughs> <laughs> on my path to sobriety. Yeah, <laughs> there is a well, three words that are used a lot in that context: grateful, path, and journey. I don't like a lot. See, of in rugby league terms, I never use the term I "eyes up." Because I just think it's complete and utter But eyes up footing. It's just such, it's mm. ridiculous. The other one I never use is spine. I always say the creatives. Mm. I just don't. <laughs> I, just, I, just, uh, I heard you say spine a thousand times. And before. I'm pretty sure you've written it and I've punched it in the computer for you for I your said, articles. No, I, mm. I, Trish, I actually, ta I absolutely mm. do not. Yeah. Spine mm. drives me mad. Okay. Okay, that's um, <laughs> Cooper's quiz time. Yeah, guys, go we're going to do something different today. We've got a little on. family feud. Oh! <gasps> I Don't. can't even tell you how much that excites me. Thank you, Trish. Uh, we've got a little bit family feud here. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the family, which is obviously you three, a question. Okay. You each get to pick one. Uh, and then I'm going is it to- Is It's not buzzers. We're going to start left to right from Jack. Oh. Uh, and then we're going to see, um, yeah, if you just get them all. Anyway. Okay. Okay. So Come on, then. Jack. Not much of a host, are you? <laughs> so what are our instructions? We just give one answer because on Family Feud you would- Yeah, but for the- Top three answers. It's, a, it's only an hour podcast. So I'm uh, going to let you pick one each. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah. Okay. We'll see how we go. 
Jack, if you could go to the land of Oz, what would you ask the wizard for? We are, we surveyed a hundred people. Like oh, the the but you didn't. the fictional place. Yeah, mm. the wizard. In so the you get in the wish. Um. Oh, the probably the um. I'm gonna say the, the most popular answer would be the uh, red boot, the red shoes, the ruby slippers. Yeah, the the slippers. Bam, bam, not even on the board. No, what are uh, you talking can, about? Can I? Yeah, it's on you know. now, Trish. Okay. Um, I would. I want to go home. Let's see if home's on there. No, home is not on what? there. What? But is, that's the whole point of it. It's surveying 100 people. I this is people. asking, Dad, you were the only one There's who gets a chance. people high at the time. Yeah, to, to take this question and win. It's bullshit. Yep. <laughs> so if you would go to the land of Oz, what would you ask the wizard for? Money. Ding, ding. Money. 37. That was also the top answer. Yes. <laughs> I was oh, going to say health. They totally I I was set that say, out. That's bullshit. I, I, I was going to say health, but I went, f*** <laughs> health. That is Just bullshit. give me the money. But, no, but if you're following the story. It's not about It's not about the story. You've got to listen. It's just about, it's like rubbing a genie. Yeah. yeah. Rubbing so, a genie. <laughs> sorry. Right. What genies are you rubbing? Genie. genie. Yeah. Okay. Next, que- <laughs> next question, guys. <laughs> you, uh, okay. Man. Jack, we'll start at you, you again. Okay. Yeah. Name a place where if her husband took her there for their anniversary, a wife would be mad. We surveyed 100 people. For their anniversary, did you say? Yes. Um, uh, like a fast food store? I'm going to say that. I'm going to, ta- I'm going to, yes, I'm going to give you the top answer there. There's a tacky restaurant. I'm going to say oh. that is fast food store. I'll give you that. 43 people answered. Wow, that. good work, Jack. Mm-hmm. See if you can get the other ones. Um, the football. Boom. Third answer, sporting event. Oh. Number 12. I was going to say people. that. Dad, you get a chance. Oh. To watch the ball. I would say. I like this game. To a strip club. That's the second <laughs> answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. You get the top three. Tacky <laughs> restaurant, strip joint, and sporting event. We need to get ourselves Boom. on Family Feud. Honestly. Okay, and the last question. You oh. guys have done so good so far. Okay. Dad, let's start at you this time. Gotcha. Name something a woman with a crush on Santa might leave out for him instead of cookies. Beer. Boom. Booze. Uh, six people answered that. Oh. It was the third last oh. and the I think it's the, it's the sixth answer. So well done. I well respect done. you as Chris. Chris Trish. Okay. The question again, please. Name Quizmaster. something a woman with a crush on Santa might leave out for him instead of cookies. <laughs> lingerie lingerie second top answer oh jack there's a chance that's a trish that's a girl who knows what santa <laughs> wants jack's in with a jack palance jack you get a chance to get the top answer it's between two things what's your thought process what is that i, I could go naughty i could go nice here i'm gonna go nice i'm gonna say their phone number the third answer. Oh, you know oh. what? Though he's in her was house. Was it nudes? Was it nudes? Nudes was the fifth answer. The first one mm. was candy or better food than cookies. Oh, oh that's shit. Maybe yeah. a lobster oh. morning. Yeah. Oh, It'd be cold nice. by the time yeah. we nice got there. Lobster bisque. Yeah. Good. Good but, uh, yeah, that's the game. <laughs> so I, nice oh. cook. I really enjoyed that. I did too. Trish, let's like before it. you do a, a brief uh, feedback, my predicament of the week, people. Okay, okay here we go. Right, uh, there's a million dollars worth of prize money up for grabs if you eat a bucket of A, your own shit. <laughs> B, that'd make you very sick. A bucket of sand. Or C, a bucket of dead dog's penises. Now, if you don't <laughs> eat it all, not only. Do you not win the million dollars? You have to pay a man. Do you take the challenge? Firstly, would you take the challenge for a million dollars and being able to eat one of those three yeah. drinks? Yeah, and I'm taking the sand. Oh, oh shit. Now, understand this. If you can't eat the bucket of sand, Trish, then you've got to pay a man. Yeah, so well, you, you, how, long, you, how long do I get to? Well, I think you just got to eat it. Yeah, gotta, that's fine. I'll just take my time and eat it. A bit, lots of water. Mm. You get, you got to, You basically won't be pleasant. You got, you got, won't you get, be pleasant coming out the other end. It'll be you've like got sandpaper. A, you've got an hour Nasty. to do it. So oh, okay, yeah, you've got an it's hour. A small so bucket. that's okay. Jack, what about you? Um, oh, shit. 
Oh. How, how recently are those dogs dead? I would say that the dogs would be <laughs> the dogs would be let's say two weeks old, a two weeks past. Who's shit? Your own. Your own shit. Oh, and believe wow. me, I've smelt your <laughs> shit. I wouldn't be eating it. Um, it'd be the sand, uh, but uh, I'd, I'd just rather not attempt at all. Okay, so you don't attempt. Okay, that's I'm out. Why. You don't have to. Yeah. Coop million dollars up for grabs, but if you don't complete it yeah. within an hour, oh, you have to pay. How many air. penises are in the bucket? You think? Oh, bucket um, full. It'd be like you know, an like estimate? how many? Fifty. Like a. A bucket of it's the Colonel's of chickens, Cooper. 20, so I'd say I'd say a dozen penises. Oh, so 12 penises. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll tackle the penises then. Yeah, Can you? I fry <laughs> them or anything or just roll? No, I've got them raw. Okay. I'll let them raw. Like sashimi. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're the yeah. easiest meal 12, I've ever 12 I'd penises. Go, I'd go the shit. I'd eat my own shit. You reckon? Yeah, I would do it. I've seen you do it, Coop. <laughs> Remember Trish were in England? No, he did When he was a little we go, yeah, you know, blah, no, blah, blah, blah. No, he'd play in And we walked in, you'd have your nappy off, and literally shit would be yeah. absolutely everywhere. Yeah, but he didn't put it in his mouth. Well, I think you the morning know. I went there, Delicious. he did. It's not I like would, Charlie. I would love the Daily Mail to get a hold of this and just have an exclusive. <laughs> Matty Johns confesses to eating his own shit. Yeah, mm. liking yeah. eating his own shit. What you do is just put a peg over your nose, just put a little bit of barbecue mm. sauce on it. Away. <laughs> do you know? Well, if um, I can't grill the dog's penises, you can't put barbecue sauce yeah, on the Yeah, you're not getting any. Guys, yeah. I'm doing the rules. You are able to put oh. a condiment on the shit or the mm. sand. Mm. Anyway, mm. Trish, your feedback this week? Cooper, yeah. I think people are confusing us because I actually got a mean message this week. Can you believe it? Oh. Kai said... Uh, and he was like early up and he's like 10 out of 10 for the country song. I'm going, yes, I'm going to get some great feedback. Yeah, I didn't get that much actually. Uh, then followed it up with another little message when he said, oh, yeah, but one was the highest. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's dead that, shit. We do with Fletch and Hindy. One out of 10, yeah, one oh, was Dead shit. Anyway, so anyway, I'm going to give give you something else that I found oh, really please, interesting no. okay. mm. when I read um, this week, do you know that Australians spend three point six billion dollars a year fighting their spouses over their assets and money in divorce? Mm, thinking mm. of that right now. So the only winners are well, I've got an interesting fact for you. The, the win, of- yeah, the winners are the lawyers, obviously mm. making three point six billion dollars out of it. Divorce rates are rising across the board, especially Matthew for our demographic mm. between Aussies between fifty and sixty five. Mm. So there's hope for me I yet. Get, I get it. Mm. The tips from the divorce lawyers are sign a prenup. That, Cooper, that, you were all over yeah. that. There were eight questions that they ask. They say you should discuss and ask before you get married. Okay. I thought this was really interesting. They and the, and I don't think we did any of these, Matthew. Mm. Um, how many kids would you like? Oh, oh, now you asked me how many kids I had, and I <laughs> said twelve. No. Um, if we have kids, who will be the primary caregiver? We never discussed that. You no. just assumed it would it's be me. Just assumed it would be me, yeah. Uh, who will do the cooking? Again, didn't ask. It was just assumed that it well, would be me. Well, you said who will do the cooking. I thought you were talking about on the football field, and I said, well, it's always me. Cooking. Let him cook. Yeah. Um, this is an interesting one. How often do you want to visit your parents? I visit the pa- my parents basically as much as I really want to, which is once every decade. <laughs> Um, where do you want to live? We never really discussed that. And actually, I got dragged across where places I didn't want to be. Yeah. Uh, when love. when do you want to retire? Yeah, well, I actually said I wanted to retire um, when I retired from football. But the old slave driver here whick, just keeps me going. I said today, so I'm at the point I'm going to scale back. And you went, no, you're not. I went, okay, I'm not. <laughs> Keep that work ethic up. I love it. Yeah. Thanks, oh, mate. my God. You would just be... Useless and tired yeah. and you an would, unbearable yeah. bear. Mm. You need work, Dad. I know. Why Even in the off season, why you don't get all grumpy. both just shut up for a second. <laughs> hey, I'll you don't be deciding. Know you know. Hey, I'll be deciding when I retire. No, you, you just like it. Okay. Anyway, how much money do you have, and uh, how much do you spend? That's another question. Oh, that's a good one. That'd be an awkward question to ask. Yeah. And are we going to pool our incomes or have separate accounts? I swear mm. that's a. Ve- Is this just before marriage? Yeah, they're ever- saying before you consider marriage to someone. Oh yeah, I feel you like really that's- need to clear. We didn't discuss any of those because no, no, I don't think the money thing or the account thing is important at all. I've got no well, it is when it comes to divorce. Yeah, I, well, I, I, but you're not you're not like thinking about divorce when you first get married. No, but you should. Do you know what? I, I, someone asked me a rude <laughs> question the other day. They said, "Oh, how much money you got?" And I actually put my hand on my heart and I said, "I've got no idea." No, you've got no money. Yeah. I, I've, got, I've got no idea where the money is or anything. I just said to Trish, I said, look, 
when you die, you know, and look, Trish, I'm not hoping you I die will. before. No, we all will. We're all in the queue. It's one queue. I don't want to jump. Uh, is that <laughs> can you just leave a book that I'll be able to give to Cooper or Jack and say, please give me my money because I have got no idea where it is, how much mm. we've got or anything. I'm just a hopeless fool. Mm. Hopeless fool with stars in his eyes. Mm. <laughs> and in his heart. Yes, you are. Well, I enjoyed that today. Um, that on that note of getting divorced, we might oh. just, uh, on that happy note, sign off. Trish, thank you. Jack Johns, you're electrifying. Well done. <laughs> Good zingers. <laughs> Hope you like those, Candice. And well done to you, Cooper. Thanks, bro. Love the jumper. And Matt, you really, you know, shone today. Yeah, felt good. Mm. Felt good. I'm letting Coop take the reins bit by bit. Well, you did say that. You said at the start, take the reins. And then I couldn't get uh, a, a, any yeah. word in to actually take the reins. I just felt it was time to elevate the podcast. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye.